right, in this presentation, we're going to give a brief introduction to clinician-based ultrasound. My name is Rich Gordon. I have no disclosures to make. In this presentation, we're going to discuss why point-of-care ultrasound is possible. We're going to compare and contrast different ways to apply ultrasound in the healthcare system today. Hopefully, by the end of it, you'll understand what defines point-of-care ultrasound, also called POCUS for short. Hopefully, you'll understand the differences between radiology-performed ultrasound and point-of-care ultrasound and understand the strengths and the weaknesses of point-of-care ultrasound. So what exactly is point-of-care ultrasound? Well, point-of-care ultrasonography is defined as ultrasonography brought to the patient and performed by the provider in real time. Point-of-care ultrasound images can be obtained nearly immediately, and the clinician can use real-time dynamic images, allowing the findings to be directly correlated with the patient's presenting signs and symptoms. It's important to understand, however, that medical ultrasonography really has deep roots and it goes all the way back to the World War I era, where the principles of sonar were being pioneered. Now, the first ultrasound images were published in the 1940s, but it wasn't really used for diagnostic purposes until the late 1950s. And shortly thereafter, ultrasonography was adopted by radiology, cardiology, so on and so forth, and became quite popular, obviously, over the next several decades. In the 1990s, point-of-care ultrasound really took off, and we'll talk about why that happened here shortly. But you can see today that point-of-care ultrasound is really morphed into a diverse application. Now, it's no secret that radiology, interventional radiology, uses ultrasound. But just looking over this list, hopefully you'll see that it really is applied quite widely and you'll be hard pressed, no matter what field you're in, to not use ultrasound in the future. So it's great that you're here with us and we're gonna assist you in laying a foundation that's going to help you better care for your patients. Additionally, when it comes to imaging in the resource limited setting, point of care ultrasound has the potential to be the initial imaging modality of choice. Imagine trying to carry a CAT scanner or an X-ray machine with you into the jungle. That's obviously not going to work, but with modern ultrasound machines, you can carry this into the jungle or to the desert or into the mountains and actually image your patients there at the point of care. And the reality is, is if you're one of the providers who decides they want to provide care for patients in the developing world, ultrasound will be your imaging modality of choice when you're caring for those patients. Okay, let's talk about why point of care ultrasound has really taken off. Let's consider the radiology scan. This would be a scan performed by the radiology department. First, the primary clinician, that being the clinician that's actually taking care of the patient, requests an ultrasound imaging study. Now the patient is transported to the machine once the machine and the sonographer are available. The technician conducts a comprehensive protocol, let's say for example a right upper quadrant study, which would include an evaluation of the liver, the IVC, the kidney, the pancreas, and the aorta, in addition to the gallbladder and the biliary tree. Images are then sent to a radiologist. Images are interpreted by that radiologist. Report is generated for the primary clinician, and then those findings are integrated into the actual care of the patient. Now, as you can see, this is a time-consuming process, and if there was a sudden change in the status of the patient, it's not very easy to repeat the study. Let's say, for example, that the patient is unstable to begin with. Are we really going to send them to an ultrasound suite to get that study? For that matter, are we going to send them to the CAT scanner or to the MRI to get imaging? The answer is no. And the reality is that we still need those imaging studies to get our patients to definitive care. Think about a ruptured AAA for a second. Are we really going to sit there and give them 10 units of blood and hope that they actually stabilize so we can go get imaging? Absolutely not. We need to be able to image this patient right away so we can get him to the operating room and get definitive care. Well, this is not to beat up the radiology department, but there's no denying that it is a cumbersome process. And up until the last two decades, it was a necessary evil. It's just what it was. And the reasons for that were, one, machines were not very mobile. The machines were quite technically challenging to operate. Lots of buttons and switches and knobs. And not only were a select few actually trained to interpret those images, only a select few were actually trained to be able to acquire the images and learn how to actually operate those technically challenging machines. There's lots of pros that come with the radiology scan, and I'm not trying to say that there's no place for the radiology scan. Obviously, it's a comprehensive study of regional organs. Remember when I just went over the right upper quadrant study? You're not just looking at the gallbladder. You're looking at all the surrounding organs and vasculature. These images are usually very high quality. 
And there's multiple reasons for this, one being the sonographer who is trained to use the machine and they've learned all the tricks of the trade to optimize this machine and to negotiate some of the pitfalls that we often see when doing bedside ultrasound. Additionally, these are the highest end machines. These are top end machines with all the bells and whistles that can be deployed to obtain the best images possible. Additionally, you have high end PAX viewers. So these images are sent to the viewer where the radiologist can look at the images on a screen that is extremely high quality. Now, not only are the images much more high quality, you have the radiologist who has tons of experience identifying subtle findings. Now the cons, well the machines are extremely expensive, sometimes on the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars. What if there is a change in the status of the patient and the study needs to be repeated? What if the patient is unstable to begin with? Are we really going to send them to the ultrasound suite? Additionally, technicians are not always available. There's hospitals all over the nation who do not have technicians available overnight or on weekends. So who's going to do these studies? A lot of times, these patients have to be transferred to a hospital hours away where a sonographer is on call 24-7 just to get that study. And obviously, the process takes time. I just walked you through a general protocol of how you would get a radiology-performed ultrasound. Now, since the early 90s, there have been several developments that have allowed point-of-care ultrasound to become what it is today. And it starts with the development of smaller machines and therefore much more portable machines. Machines have become much more affordable. As I mentioned earlier, the machines used by the radiology department are often on the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Today, the standard price for small, portable machines is highly variable, usually in the tens of thousands of dollars. However, there's even newer machines becoming available that are handheld and are on the order of four or $5,000. There's now even machines that are just a probe that you can plug into your standard Windows-based tablet and you can actually perform your ultrasound through that tablet. And these are on the order of five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Now, I'm not trying to say these prices are pocket change, but when compared to machines used by the radiologist, which are similar to a mortgage, these machines are actually affordable. And the machines have also become much more user-friendly. In future discussions, you're going to see pictures of some of the machines that we have where all those buttons and knobs have really been watered down to just a few buttons and knobs. Ultrasound is now being taught in first and second year medical school. For those that are already past medical school, there's lots of courses widely available for practice at scanning and practice at interpreting images. Now that's not to say that you can attend a week and see me course in Cabo San Lucas and become a sonologist. What I am saying is you don't have to complete a four-year residency to be able to incorporate ultrasound into your practice. The reality is most people get ultrasound training in residency these days, and it's something that you should look into while you're interviewing for residency. For those of us that are beyond residency, you can attend courses on ultrasound, and there's lots of CME out there, but the reality is experience is where it's at. So you should get involved with your hospital's point-of-care ultrasound program and get some experience through them. If not locally, there usually is a hospital regionally that does ultrasound training. You can get hands-on training and experience doing point-of-care ultrasound and ultimately apply for your local hospital's basic point-of-care ultrasound credentials. If they're not available at your hospital locally, it won't be long before it is. So because of all of this, the sonologist has been born. And this is differentiated from the sonographer because the sonologist is a clinician who performs the ultrasound. And they're able to actually acquire those images. They then interpret those images and they can be immediately integrated into the clinical course of that patient. Obviously, the Synologist Scan has a lot of benefits. It's done at the bedside. The patient doesn't have to leave your care. We've talked about this already. Machines are highly portable, and they can be carried to the resource-limited setting, which provides the physician practicing in the austere environment with highly sophisticated imaging technology. And overall, most importantly, you're able to get quick answers to your clinical questions, which is going to enhance your ability to provide definitive care for your patients. Now the cons? Most of the time, the sonologist performed exams are not comprehensive exams. Now, obviously, there are instances where the provider in the field who's caring for a patient may actually be a radiologist. And because that's the way they were trained to do comprehensive protocolized studies, they may conduct their bedside scan that way. However, overall, most bedside providers do limited studies trying to answer very specific questions. Obviously, the scanning and the interpreting are very user-dependent. 
there's a wide array of ultrasound skill out there. The image quality is good, but not as good as our radiology colleagues. Remember, they have the highest level of training and the most sophisticated machines, which are going to translate to the highest quality images. That's not to say we're not able to achieve a lot of the things that we set out to do. We just can't achieve all of the things that our radiology colleagues can do. So let's go ahead and compare and close out. With the radiology scan, it's a comprehensive study, whereas with the clinician scan, it's usually a focused study. Now, the radiologist is usually limited to traditional studies, this being the AAA screen or the right upper quadrant study or a renal study. The clinician scanning capability often transcends multiple specialties. So it'd be rare to see a radiologist do an ocular study or doing a lung study. In a lot of cases, radiologists don't perform pelvic ultrasounds on patients who are outside of the first trimester of pregnancy. With radiologists, it's the highest quality of images, whereas with the clinician scan, it's very user dependent. With radiologists, it is the highest trained interpreter, whereas with the clinician, image interpretation is very user dependent. And that's based on the level of experience that they have. Radiology scans, they take time to complete, whereas a clinician scan can be performed quickly and simultaneously with ongoing care at the bedside. And like I just mentioned, the clinician scans are done at the bedside, whereas to get a radiology scan, the patient often has to leave your care. So in closing, I hope you see that really the radiology scan and the clinician scan is two different entities. I'm not trying to say one is superior to the other. What I am trying to say is that they really are different. And there's a place in patient care for both of them to coexist. Really, we have different missions and we are providing different services. So on that note, we'll go ahead and close out. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, rigordon at gru.edu. And we'll see you in future basic point of care ultrasound series lectures. Mm -hmm.